By 1981, the program SCTV was finally showing signs of hard-won success. Not only had the show finally been picked up for national broadcast by the CBC, it had attained the great brass ring of Canadian broadcasting, an American network slot on NBC. As it turned out, the Canadian version of the show was two minutes longer than the American version because the CBC had fewer commercials. Therefore, CBC had told the cast to come up with two extra minutes for the Canadian edition of the show. And the corporation stressed, make that two extra distinctly Canadian minutes. You want Canadian, Moranis thought? Really distinctly Canadian? Well, you got it, bub. So I said, get us some back bacon, a grill, and some cases of beer. And that's how Bob and Doug McKenzie, the Canadian Uber hosers, who were almost as big as the Beatles for a fleeting media moment, were born. It was Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas's intention that the throwaway gag would be just that, thrown away once the point had been made about the sheer idiocy of the Canadian content regulation, which is one of the reasons that the two comedians, both of whom were among the program's most accomplished writers, decided not to bother scripting the segments. What was the point? In one day, they taped 40 two-minute segments of the mock program called The Great White North. Of those, 10 were selected for broadcast. Pulling off their toques and unzipping their parkas, Moranis and Thomas probably thought that would be the last they'd hear about Bob and Doug McKenzie. For reasons the McKenzie's creators were far too dumbfounded to account for, Bob and Doug had officially mutated into one of those genuine TV issue pop cult phenomena. While Moranis and Thomas weren't sure why Bob and Doug had caught on like brush fire, they were astute enough pop cult observers to know it wouldn't last. Choosing one of three recording deals which had come in a single week, Moranis and Thomas went into a studio to record the McKenzie Brothers' one and only album, which appropriately contained a vocal cameo by Hoser Deity and lead singer of Rush, Giddy Lee. The record, released in the fall of 1981, went through the roof, vaulting to number one in Canada and selling more than 300,000 copies in less than a month. Instead of walking away from the act before it had a chance to cool, Moranis and Thomas decided to accept the inevitable offer to take the McKenzie Brothers to Hollywood. And in 1982, they released a feature-length, big-budget movie about Bob and Doug called Strange Brew. For a brief time, not only did the intense beam of continental pop cult obsession light on something both Canadian and absurdly so, but it made it cool to be a hoser. So what if it came and went faster than a beer on a hot afternoon? For it was a beauty while it lasted, eh?